Let's go first to Ottawa, where the federal government is holding a summit on dealing with discrimination. Anti-Semitism and Islamophobia are the focus. Statistics collected by various organizations indicate attacks, intimidation and threats against both groups are on the rise in Canada. But as CBC's Travis Danrash reports, today's anti-Semitism session is facing some criticism over who hasn't been invited. I don't know! Stop! Holy sh Early July, a Jewish man attacked in Toronto. Hey, what's up? Not much. Jewish much? Also this month, a man brandishing a swastika on his chest in a Toronto park. Just a few weeks ago, I was accosted by, by a, 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 an anti-Semite who, who, uh, who hit me with, with, with words that I can't even repeat. A recent audit by Benai Birth Canada found there were more than 2,600 anti-Semitic incidents last year, up 18.3% from 2019, a troubling statistic being discussed at this week's national summit on racism. The rise in hate-motivated crimes against the Jewish community in the past few months is not only alarming, it's completely unacceptable. Far too many people are getting sucked into fake news stories and conspiracy theories uh, about the Jewish community that are leading to acts of intimidation, harassment, uh, assault and other violence. But there is criticism the summit is excluding many that wanted to attend. Not to invite uh, the only Jewish federal leader uh, to attend, I think is a loss. You need to have different perspectives uh, at the table and not just the same ones and, and, and the voices you want to hear. The government says it is committed to listening to all voices and fighting hate, today announcing more than $6 million delivered through its security infrastructure program to help at-risk communities beef up security. We'll continue to work with everyone um, whose safety and security is being threat threatened by the actions of, of those who are intolerant and hateful. But applications for the program are only accepted during certain times of the year. Places of worship also can't be reimbursed for urgent expenses. To issues religious leaders want fixed. Tomorrow, attention at the summit will turn to tackling Islamophobia. Leaders of all faiths agree once the conversations are over, real action is needed for communities to live free of fear. Travis Danrash, CBC News, Ottawa. The question is whether that action will come from today's summit. I'm joined now by Shimon Koffler Fogel. He's the CEO at the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs and was part of today's summit where he made recommendations of ways to approach and combat anti-Semitic hate. He is in Ottawa tonight. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. So let's talk first about some of the recommendations that you made. What are some of the things that you want to see implemented to combat anti-Semitism in this country? So we think there there has to be uh, more focused attention uh, and coordinated efforts with respect to uh, physical safety and security issues. Uh, we're looking for um, uh, police forces across the country to have dedicated hate crime units. Uh, we want to see a uniform approach uh, by attorneys general at the provincial level uh, to really demonstrate a much more vigorous and robust approach uh, to laying charges in hate-related crimes. Uh, and uh, we would like a uh, complementary program to the security infrastructure program that, that you referenced earlier um, that would empower communities like ours uh, to take greater ownership and work uh, much more effectively with local law enforcement officials uh, to ensure the safety of their uh, communal institutions. So that's on the public safety side. Uh, we also think that there has to be increased focus on the education front uh, in two respects. Uh, one is to ensure that the public school curricula uh, reflect um, a meaningful and um, comprehensive uh, discussion about uh, hatred, uh, including anti-Semitism, uh, and that all students uh, have the opportunity to become much more uh, sensitized uh, to uh, the realities faced by targeted communities. Uh, but for us, uh, one of the most critical elements uh, relates to social media. Uh, we are calling for a national social media literacy campaign, uh, which will uh, um, help Canadians appreciate, especially younger Canadians, that social media platforms are a two-edged sword. Uh, they allow us um, to engage uh, to entertain, uh, to connect, uh, 
uh, to collect information, and those are all wonderful uh, developments that benefit us all. But it has a darker side. Uh, and uh, just like Canadians had to benefit from a public education campaign with respect to uh, cannabis use, that there are dimensions that require serious attention because there are potentially dangerous consequences to the abuse of cannabis products. So too with social media, do people have to appreciate and become much more sensitive to the ability for social media platforms to be used as an instrument for hate, uh, for harassment, for bullying, for intimidation, for threats, uh, and for really targeting uh, individuals and individuals within uh, racialized communities uh, uh, who don't have capacity uh, to respond on social media in an effective way. So we're calling for the government to undertake that kind of an education program nationwide uh, so that people can become more informed, more sensitive, and learn to use social media in an appropriate and responsible way and recognize when it's being abused and what they can do about it. Yeah, I want to pick up on your point about social media because there was a report released yesterday that found online activity by far-right extremists in Canada rose in this past year. And I have to also wonder what role the pandemic played in that. Are you concerned about um, far-right extremist groups thriving online um, and particularly at a time when we're at home and we're on our computers and, and it seems to be a, a growing issue in this country? Well, what we know for, for sure is that online hate leads to real world violence. Uh, and we've seen it time and again uh, with every horrific incident that's taken place, whether uh, it's the Pittsburgh um, uh, synagogue shooting or Christchurch in New Zealand. Um, there's always a connection between the gathering of radicalizing information online and then offline violence that flows from that. Uh, it's true of the right um, uh, in particular uh, because social media has another uh, attribute. Uh, it's anonymity. So people can feel free to share whatever toxic information they want online without as much concern about any kind of comeback or consequences to them, which is why um, the government um, has to be um, uh, praised for introducing legislation in Bill C-36 uh, to address the issue of online hate. Uh, but I think that they too recognize in my discussions with Minister Lametti uh, that it is only a first step along the process. We have to bring in the social media giants, right. uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, they have to be part of the solution. All right, Shimon, we'll have to leave it there. Shimon Koffler Fogel is a CEO at the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. He was part of today's uh, national uh, summit uh, against anti Semitism. And we will continue this conversation next hour uh, with uh, Federal Justice Minister Erwin Kotler, who's giving closing statements at today's, uh, excuse me, former Federal Justice Minister, who's giving uh, closing statements at today's summit. We want to turn now to some breaking news a fight within the Green Party.